Okay, I'm not sure any of that stuff that I just did was recorded, but this is the start of our Ustream, and basically we just went through the kit. Uh, all I did was spray these flowers with some perfect pearls in the white. It's this white to give them a little shimmer. So I'm going to put this to the side and let it dry. And then on my mat, I have all of this goodness that's here. So instead of trashing the goodness, I have my little tag sitting here. And I'm just going to run them through because then that's going to give them a little bit of a shimmer too. And don't forget what I said at the beginning of this for those of you who missed it and are watching the recording. Um, we're going to make these, we're going to use these tags to put our numbers on in the December. So this particular Ustream, just as a review, is going to be in several parts. Um, tonight we're just going to work on our covers and then uh, in a couple of weeks you guys will see me do a YouTube video showing, me how, showing you how I put the base of the book together and then we're going to um, do our dividers and use our numbers in our December book and if we have time then we'll go ahead and do the first few days of December because we'll be doing our Ustream um, we'll be doing our Ustream in December anyway uh, December 2nd so days 1 and 2 we'll try and do those on um, you know in that use stream as well so instead of wasting the glimmers that we're going to use we're going to mop them up with these tags and then use the tags with those December that December class okay so now let's start looking at we got our flowers they're drying let's start looking at our burlap so what I've done is I've got a piece of this is just recycled board box and it's cut seven inches by seven inches you know the flap on the on the shipping boxes um, and on one side only now if you want this to be a super sturdy cover then you may want to reinforce this with a very thin piece of cardstock or chipboard but I don't want to I don't care I think that it adds to the charm if it gets a little rustic so I'm gonna just grab one edge of this and pull it up in spots only on one side don't do both sides you only want to do one side and I don't want to reveal all of it but I do want to reveal a lot of it does that make sense I want to have some spots that are flat because I want to stamp on them so is everybody following me so far am I losing anybody or is anybody confused about anything now's the time to ask me questions because I'm looking at the chat So if you want to follow along with Tanya, this is going to keep Tanya accountable is what's happening. Tanya's fixed it so that I'm accountable for doing this every day. Um, so um, if you want to follow along, go ahead and pre-order your kit now. I think that got that didn't get recorded. Um, go ahead and order your kit now from FlamingoScraps.com. She just sold out of the last kit that she had on hand, so the rest will be in... Um, pre-orders. I can't pull tape and talk at the same time tonight for some reason. This stuff isn't wanting to pull off too. You can wet this if you want to. It'll help it pull a little easier. But I don't want this board any wetter than it has to be right now because um, I need it to be sturdy. And it will fall apart. It is just recycled chipboard okay and you know another thing another trick that I've seen people do before is taking your scissors and just starting it that way so you guys get the idea on this right you're gonna pull off as much of this as you want um, if you can get it to come off in a big piece keep it we can recycle it but again the measurements on this chipboard is seven inches by seven inches our paper stack is six by six so that's going to give us a little bit of an overhang all the way around and I love that because then if I decide to hang over the edge of my pages a little bit uh, it's still protected in my book <coughs> sorry for the cough in your ear 
All right. I'm going to pull just a little bit more of this off. Hi, Brandy. Welcome, welcome. Okay. I'm going to leave the rest of this because I'm not going to use this for mine anyway. Mine's already dry and ready to go. I just want to show you guys how to paint it. So um, peel as much of it off as you want. Leave as much of it as you want. Um, I think sometimes the more variation you have, the better. Obviously, the less you pull off, the more sturdy it's going to become. Now, on the back side, where you didn't pull anything off, that's where you're going to place your burlap. Now, I highly recommend you cutting your burlap bigger than what you need because it does fray a lot. So, you want to make sure that you have enough on there so that when you trim it back or when you glue it down, you can trim it back. Excuse me, guys. Um, without having to sacrifice, uh, you know, having to cut it too too close. So this piece right here just is wanting to be a stinker, so we're just going to glue it to that side. Okay, I'm just going to use glue and seal. You can use matte medium. You can use Elmer's glue. It doesn't matter. But don't use hot glue. Just use a wet adhesive that you want to paint an even coat all the way around because that even coat is what is going to keep this from coming off. Okay, so we're going to put that on there and just press it in and let it dry for a few minutes. Now we don't have the luxury of dry time here, so for the sake of TV, we're going to go ahead and just keep working on it. But what I would recommend you doing when you're doing yours at home is just take a heavy block or something and it doesn't take long but just take a heavy block or something and put it on top of it go have lunch come back and then you do it okay then we're gonna take let that dry really fast and we're gonna work on this back side I'm not gonna cover this side with um, burlap I only did the fronts and then what I want to do is take, I just have some gesso on my desk. This is just regular full body gesso that I kind of, it's gotten a little bit thick just from sitting here on my desk. And it has little fibers in it from my paintbrush. That's kind of weird. Let me flick that off into the trash. Um, if it dries out on you, all you have to do is add a little bit of of water. This is just a bottle of water on my desk and then just mix it up. I always put my gesso into these smaller containers because if I forget to leave the lid and I leave the lid off, I'm not ruined a $30 bottle of gesso. I've only ruined this small amount. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take and just with a palette knife and just scrape some of this off onto here. And again, I would probably take my time and pick some more of this off. And when you see the one that we really use, I'll point it out to you so you can tell. But I'm just going to scrape that across. And it's going to give that look like you have um, encountered like a wall that's been partially painted. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Another thing that would be super cool on here, I didn't use it, but some of the crackle medium, um, the Tim Holtz Rock Candy crackle medium would be really cute on here too. Um, let's mix media it up. I just don't happen to have any of the crackle medium. I've used it all. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a few minutes. And I'm going to see if that's not quite dry yet. So, um... Then I'm going to take, while that's, we'll go ahead and work with it while it's wet. Um, I've pulled out some colors here. I have the Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine, which Flamingo Scraps had. So you guys just need to, um, I don't know if she still has it or not. But any gold color that you have in your stash would work. And then I wanted a hint of green. So last month we talked about Lindy Stamp Gang and I used Ponderosa Pine Olives. So it's still sitting here on my desk. And I'm going to very lightly miss that. Very lightly. See how it's kind of turning. It's getting really cool. 
Yeah, Canvas Core, Prima, they all there's a couple companies out there that have the burlap sheets. Um some of them uh, I just I don't know. I just buy it by the bolts cuz I just love it. Um and I happen to have it on stash. Okay, then we also have what else do I have over here? I think that's it for right now. That's pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and let that dry. I'm going to have to use that heat gun. So does anybody have any questions? Hi, Lamore, by the way. And hi, Kim. Does anyone have any questions so far? I think it's been pretty explanatory, self-explanatory. Once this is where I can touch it, I'm going to flip it over. Okay, it's probably not as dry as I would really want it in real life, but it'll work. Okay, same thing on the back side where the burlap is. We're going to go ahead and I need to cover this up before I accidentally mess it up. Um, go ahead and do the same thing on the burlap that we did on the on the back side. I'm just going to scrape some of this color on here, go in different directions, don't be real particular. I want this to be more like a dry brush though, so I don't want a thick coat of paint on this. I want it to look tattered, mixed media-ish. And then once again, the burlap was just, I like the look of the burlap, but it needed a little life added to it. So I hit it with these colors again. And like I said, I have the um, Ponderosa Pine Olives from Lindy Stamp Gang. I used all my gold Lindy Stamp Gang in the last class that we taught. That Gossamer Gold, I love it. And I, I think it was the Gossamer Gold. And I used it all up. And I've got to put an order in. All right. Then I hit it with the gold, and now I don't even know if the camera is going to pick it up, but it has this really nice shine to it. I don't know if you guys can even tell I did it. It, You know, I experimented with different greens. I really did. And I found that with the paper collection, because uh, look at that. I'm going to get up close so the camera will focus on it. I don't know if with the lighting, if you can tell. But where I did the white gesso and then I sprayed the green first, it turned the mint color that is the exact color that is in our paper collection. And again, I don't know if on camera you can see it, but I loved it. It was just a little hint of something. Does that make sense? So once I have that done, I really need this to be dry. And again, that was the Ponderosa Pine Olive from Lindy Stamp Gang. And this, actually, this particular Lindy Stamp Gang color has a gold glimmer in it as well. Oh, I remember what I wanted to do. Okay, I also decided, I'm going to put this to the side and let it dry just a little bit more off camera. Um, I also decided that I wanted to make some holly branches or some little holly leaves. And I have the Tim Holtz uh, lamp post and it has the little small holly on it. So let me show you how I did that. Let's clean this desk up a little bit first. My son's done stole my paper towels. There they are. That, do do y'all's kids do that? There'll be paper towels in your room, in the kitchen and they'll come in here to your craft room and take the ones from your craft room. Is my kids the only ones that do that? Put that. Always clean the gesso off your brushes immediately because then they get all yucky. But I have a bucket of water over here when I'm done with this. I'm probably going to just put it in that, keep it until the shoe stream's over. But make sure you're washing your brushes really well with when you use that um, matte medium on them or glue and seal. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to, I experimented with a couple of different things. I used craft card stock and I also used this, this manila card stock and I found that the manila was the best. So this is what I did. I took this ponderosa pine olive 
and I spritzed it on here. And see how it has a really nice evergreen color? It's a, it's a great color. It's got a nice gold shimmer. Can you guys see the shimmer in that? It's a beautiful color. I want to do this technique on both sides of the of the car of the tag. You could do it on a big sheet of cardstock if you wanted to, because to me this is how I make my leaves. Um, if you have holly leaves and you want to use them, use those instead. That's fine. I didn't have any, so you know. Um, how does that quote go? Necessity is the mother of all invention or something like that where you know you're sitting here and it's getting late and you gotta come up with something so what that does is that adds that nice hint of gold but notice that my cardstock color didn't fill in all the way never fear because this is what we're going to do we're going to take this wet cardstock and we're going to gently crumple it up very gently I'm going to roll it out Crumpling it up kind of helps to fuse all of those colors together, and to uh, it's almost like a like wringing out a sponge. It's going to help to uh, that paper to absorb that that color. We're going to pull it back out again, and don't have a heart attack because I know somebody out there is going to have a heart attack. I took my forest moss straight directly on here, and yes, the glimmer did stick to the pad, but I don't care and I brushed it right over the top of that and look at all that texture we're getting do it on both sides now you're going to have a variegated color for your leaves isn't that cool? and you can take a baby wipe when you're done wipe it over the top of your, of your things and get that off of there. Okay, so now you, what happens to distress when it gets wet? It runs. So we're going to take our Ponderosa Pine Olive and we're going to hit it one more time. And that's going to activate the distress colors in the ink and help fill in the rest of the, to darken it up a little bit. Okay? Now, when this is completely dry, and I'm not going to run the heat tool because I've already done all of this. Um, then you can start die cutting out your flower, your holly. And let me see if I've got one right here. This is what it looks like in right here. This is what it looks like when it's dry. I did cheat a little bit. I did after I die cut my flowers. I did come back with my ponderosa pine and just kind of darken them up on the edges. And I have one here that's flat so I can show you guys what I did. So I just pulled this one out of my die cut machine. And this is what it looks like after it's dried. And I just took my finger and wrapped it right over the top like this. Then I'm going to take these leaves and I'm going to push them toward, the, it's got to be really dry to do this. And I'm going to push them towards each other and pinch them and then curl them around and I'm going to do that with every one of these that I use tonight okay it took about 10 minutes to do it really didn't take long it took longer for the paper to dry okay so then see how those leaves automatically just went from flat to textured just like that okay so everybody clear on how to make your holly you're going to need about nine of these I'm doing the covers for my December daily so use scrap paper I used a tag for tonight but what I'm going to suggest is like I have little pieces where I've cut file folders down use these up to make things like that the other thing I did was I cut two of those same same paper I cut two of those in the large holly die that comes from Tim Holtz so the small ones came from the lamppost die and the large one came from the holly the large holly die use what you have if you don't have those dies if you've got a silhouette or you've got a um, you've got a um, cricket or anything like that cut them out of that you could even freehand holly I mean they're super simple to just cut out so 
Um, look through your stuff. I know Martha Stewart also has a punch for Holly that's a little small like this. Um, I think you could freehand the big ones for sure. Okay, the next thing that I did was the pine cone die. I'm not going to show you guys how to make the pine cones because Tim Holtz has a pine cone tutorial and I do not think that Tanya Gibbs could add one thing to a Tim Holtz tutorial. So go to his YouTube and take a look at how he makes the pine cones. We've, the die's been out long enough that most people just know how to make them. And then the only thing I did was before I rolled up the pine cone to make it, I cut off one, two, three, four, five, six of these. I just just tear it just like that then start making your pine cone and that makes them small enough to where they're not huge on your book then I just took my palette knife and touched the high points on these pine cones and that makes them look like they've got a little bit of snow on them and then I'm gonna take my um, white mist whichever one you happen to have and spray them and that's gonna make them all super shiny okay so everybody clear on the mediums and, and things that we did with, with those kind of things because we're going to have, and yeah, Tim, Tim's tutorial uses the toothpick to, and what we're going to do is I'm going to use this toothpick as a floral pick, so I left it on there. If you want, you can cut it off. It will not affect anything if it's gone. So you're going to make two pine cones. So you're going to make nine small holly, one large holly, and two pine cones. And like I said, the pine cone is, if you go to YouTube and just search pine cone, uh, Tim Holtz pine cone, it'll show up. This one's coming unraveled, so I need to put a little more glue on it. When I hit it with that glue, it just expanded, I mean with that wet medium, it just expanded and came undone. So that's what they look like. Isn't that cool? Okay, so back to our book. Let's see if it's dry enough to continue. A little bit more on the heat tool. Does anybody have any questions so far? Any of these Tim Holtz dies that we have mentioned tonight, if you are interested in them, let Suzanne know. She will special order them for you. Um, they're all dies that were released last year or the year before, so I just assume that most everybody has them or has some way of die cutting these. I'm just using simple shapes. so. Uh, nothing super fancy smancy. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next stage. And I like when I see text and things on uh, large, surfaces, large surfaces like this. Um, so what I decided to do was I have this Surface Z color box uh, ink. And Suzanne had these in the store. I don't know if she still does or not. And of course, this one is called Caribbean Turquoise. It's my favorite one. This one and Dolphin are my two favorite ones. They're the must-haves. And I'm just using a script stamp that I've had in my stash for 100 years. Literally, I think I bought this like the first year I was stamping. And this is from Stamp Stampabilities. And you want to make sure that before you stamp that you've got your your board going in the direction that you want it to be in. It doesn't matter up or down because we haven't done anything to the cover. But if you want your corrugations going up and down, make sure you stamp in that orientation. If you want them running side to side, make sure you stamp in that orientation. And I have mine running up and down. So then you want to check your script to make sure you're not stamping it upside down. And I'm just going to stamp and you can barely see it but you know what I say about barely see it that's what mixed media is all about it's about layers of things that when you look you see something every single time you look you see something you didn't see before it's about layers and layers and layers so again I'm just inking this up I can barely see that one I might have to do it in brown There we go. Maybe I just didn't have enough ink on there. And again, it doesn't have to be legible. I think it's better if it's not even, and it's better if it's splotchy, um, and it's better if it's not legible. 
it, because it's not about really what's written on it. It's about the fact that there's another layer there. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see it. I don't know if you can even see the stamping on there. Can you see it? Okay, and I also repeated that on this on this side as well, but I'm not going to because the burlap is still very wet and I don't want to take the time to dry it. So we're going to move on. So I stamped it on both sides. So my burlap has it in these gessoed areas is really the only place you're going to see it. So then I'm going to take my burlap and I'm going to trim it down. I don't want to trim it all the way to the edge of the... Um, like I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ravel out a little bit. Uh, I don't want to go all the way to the edge. I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch as I move around. And the reason for that is, is it's going to ravel just a little bit. Um, and I want to vote a lot for that because the ravel is what I want to see. I think that adds something to the texture of the book. And if I'm going for an old country shabby chic, then I need to let it be shabby. I can't worry about it being too neat. Okay, so don't throw this away. We'll use it. Okay, now I'm going to take my burlap, and there's going to be some spots where it didn't stick all that well, and I'm just going to take a bead of hot glue and run it around the perimeter of my book. Be very careful you don't burn yourself. Pull it back all the way around and go directly to the edge, all the way to the edge. You don't have to go deep, just all the way to the edge. This is going to provide a space for that burlap to stop fraying. Okay? And secure it to your book completely. Now the other thing that I like to do is on my covers, I really like to have eyelets set or grommets set into my book because it helps my jump rings just glide. I don't set eyelets or grommets into every single page in the book, but I do it on my covers. So if this is completely dry, 100% completely dry, then we need to start thinking about our holes. And First of all, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this up just a little bit because my fingers are messy. Everything here is messy, and I don't want this on my paper. I'm going to pull my paper out. And don't spray it with your perfect pearls to clean it up. Make sure you get your baby wipe or your... Now, again, there's a lot of color goodness on this mat right now. There's a lot of greens, a lot of golds, so grab those tags out and swap them around and pick up some of that color and that subtle color is what we want see look at all that found color on there just from just from our mat that's all that is and I'm going to put it off over here to the side to dry um, and the more diluted that Lindy Stamp Gang green becomes the more mint colored it becomes so keep that in mind and these are going to dry a lot lighter than they look. You may not even realize it's on there, but the shimmer will be there, and that's what we're after. And, I, and I'm literally just putting them to the side and letting them dry. Now, for the sake of video, I'm going to go ahead and just clean my mat off with my with my paper towel and move on. But see how that's going to be that's going to be shimmery goodness right there. I am so cheap when it comes to stuff. I mean, I'm telling you, I can squeeze the life out of any craft supply. But we pay good money for this stuff. There's no point in throwing it in the garbage. Okay, so my mat's clean again. 
see all that color that we would have thrown away that was you know is going to end up on our tags because you're going to do it the right way and I need to clean these fingers up because I don't want them all over everything either sometimes you just have to take a minute and clean I keep a box of, hand, of baby wipes handy I think I've bought more baby wipes in the last couple of years than I've ever bought when my children were in diapers you can never have too much happy happy mail I'm sorry that just can't happen okay so next we are going to we've made our holly we've made our pine cones we've spritzed our flowers it's time to start thinking about our cover this cover is going to get put down here on the floor because I've already pre-prepped mine <coughs> and we're going to talk really fast about I'm going to show you guys my cover real fast um, this is this is how mine ended up looking the one we're going to use tonight well poo my jump ring stuck let's talk a little bit about these grommets because when I I could never get these things to set right and these are not the ones that come with the crocodile those will be great if you have those use those um, but I can never find them locally and I forget to order them and it's when I always need them so I go to the notions department in any sewing store and I buy these and these are a quarter inch grommets and this is how they set they're perfect but it's the old-fashioned hammer the trick to this is having this tool because this tool you cannot set these without this tool at all so you have to look and it has to be the tool that is the size for the grommets that you have because if you get the other tool that's too big or too small they will not work and that's why I never could make them work because I was being cheap and only buying one tool and I wasn't buying the right tool so for every size grommet that you get you have to have this tool one side is the punch one side is the setter so just like the old-fashioned kind I just pull in a um, pull in a board I'll set one really quick in here um, take this tool put it here you're gonna take your hammer hit it and it's gonna knock a hole in I don't want to do it loud because you guys are watching so there's my hole then you're gonna take your grommet and you're gonna have two sides to this grommet you're gonna have the small size and the thick see how they have a different um, depth to them one nests inside the other so on the front you're gonna put this one that has the deep shaft and on the back then you're gonna put your material down then on the back you're gonna take this one and flip it so that the smooth side is up the rough side is down like that then you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it right over the top this is the the one that has the setter not the punch and then you're gonna pounce it and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to um, do that on camera but you're going to pounce it and then after you've pounced it this is what it looks like so is everybody following me on how to do those and you can make these any size you want as long as you have the right tool that's the trick and no you cannot set this particular size with your crocodile because the hole isn't big enough it doesn't have the right size okay and what I do is where I store these these particular eyelets I just keep the tool with it that way it's all right there together and I don't have to go looking for it